Hello and welcome to Ballot Meridian 2018 general election coverage on Home TV. I'm Chelsea Henry. Joining me in the studio is Paul Kendall, Chair of Ingham County Farmland and Open Space Preservation Board, to discuss the Ingham County County Farmland and Open Space Preservation Initiative Millage before voters on November 6. Before we discuss that proposal further, let's take a look at the ballot language. For the purpose of protecting farmland and other open space lands, including waterways, wildlife habitat, wetlands, and other natural lands, and to encourage urban development at same millage level previously approved by the voters in 2008. Shall the constitutional limitation upon the total amount of taxes which may be assessed in one year upon property within the county of Ingham, Michigan, previously increase to 0 .1400 of the mill, 14 cent per thousand dollars of state taxable valuation, to so be, con be continued and renewed for a period of 10 years, 2018 to 2027, inclusive. If approved and levied in full, this millage will raise an estimated, uh, estimated additional $1,036,059 for farmland and open pre preservation in the first calendar year of the levy, based on state taxable valuation. Now that we had a chance to look at the ballot language of the proposal, please explain what this is asking of the residents. So my name is Paul Kendall, and this millage initiative is asking the voters in Ingham County to renew, and it's a renewal, um, a millage of 0 0.14 mills. And the millage renewal will run for 10 years, and it has in the past been, as was stated, it has run since August of 2008 to 2018, and now uh, the renewal is up, and it's not going to be an increase, uh, but as I said, it's going to be a millage of 0 0.14 mils per year, and this translates for a house of about $200,000 in total value, approximately $14 a year for such a house. And how will and can this millage affect the residents of Ingham County? Well, the millage will affect the residents in a number of favorable ways, quite a few favorable ways. Um, for one, it <clears throat> will allow, well, first of all, it'll allow the county to purchase critical farmland and natural lands in Ingham County and the program has been purchasing in the past 10 years such lands near the boundary of the suburban urban area. <clears throat> so in those townships that are more on the boundary uh, is where the emphasis for the protection of these lands has occurred. And this will continue. There is a board that runs this program. It's a board of uh, the Ingham County uh, government and this board runs the program and it will continue to do so in the next 10 years. And what, if a resident was concerned about the cost of this millage, what would you tell them? The cost, um, excuse me, the cost is relatively modest as I mentioned, 0 0.14 mills per year and the advantages that are received from such a program are considerable considering the modest amount of the millage. The advantages are that such a program results in lands being protected that purify our water, that purify our air, that provide uh, or make available lands for which, from which local foods can be produced so that we would never be dependent upon foods from an outside source. It also is a plan that directs development towards urban and suburban areas away from rural areas and so it enhances um, city development and redevelopment, it enhances 
suburban development and redevelopment. Uh, it also is a program that because it's protecting open space lands particularly, but also farmlands, it, this allows recreational opportunities for people living in the urban and suburban areas. Uh, recreational opportunities like hiking, like hunting, like bird watching, and other uh, <clears throat> recreational activities such as this. Also, and this is one of the most important reasons for many people, uh, is the reasons of aesthetics. Many people like to be able to go from a urban, suburban living um, place where they are typically living and be able to go in a relatively short time, either by car or by bike, out into a rural landscape and enjoy such a rural landscape and have it nearby. And so aesthetic reasons is another one. Another reason is that <clears throat> taxes are saved because development is emphasized in the urban and suburban areas and you don't have to spread out your services like fire and police and water and sewage out into the countryside but rather these can be confined to the urban and suburban areas and this is a tax saving um, way of development. And if this um, millage is not passed, what happens then? Well, if the millage is not passed, I'm not sure exactly what will happen. Uh, it's possible that um, we could ask to go on the ballot again in a subsequent year or it's possible that the county commissioners would provide some county general funds for this program. It's possible that the program would not continue in its present form, um, but um, we would perhaps try and find monies from some other source. <clears throat> or it's possible the program would not continue at all, which would be a very unfortunate situation. And I read, um, I know you said earlier, and I read that um, all protected lands in the program will remain on the tax rolls. Could you just elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. <clears throat> These lands that are protected are protected with a conservation easement. And a conservation easement is a legal document that basically says this land will not be developed for residential, commercial, or industrial use. And this legal document is signed by both the landowner and the appropriate county representative. And it's registered with the Register of Deeds. And we, uh, as a program and as a, as a um, part of government, county government, monitor these properties once a year. We're required to monitor to make certain that the provisions of the conservation easement are followed. And so um, the lands are protected in a very, I would say, quite stringent way. And tell me again what, all, what else was in that question? Um, I, was just, I read and you said earlier about um, all lands, uh, all protected lands in the program remaining on the tax rolls. Oh, yeah. Okay, so then the person that puts the conservation easement on their property, they still own the all the rights uh, that <clears throat> all the other rights on that property. So they basically own the land. The one right that they have given up is the right to develop. So they own the land. They will still pay taxes on it. And uh, the taxes will go into the county government just as normal. <clears throat> and um, how much farmland so far like under this um, millage has been preserved? So approximately a little over 6,000 acres has been preserved. And I, as I say, it's been in this perimeter area at the edge of the urban-suburban growth boundary. <clears throat> um, so approximately a little over 6,000 acres have been protected. And in addition to that, there are uh, the state of Michigan and two private land conservancies that are protecting some land here in Ingham County. And they, these uh, three groups, 
uh, have also protected about another 2,000. So we have close to 8,000 acres protected here from development by, this, by these types of programs. <clears throat> And is there anything else that you would like the voters to know about this millage before they go out and make a decision on November 6th? I think we've covered much of the things that they should know. Um, they should know that these conservation easements are in perpetuity. That is, they are forever. And the county and any other program that takes on these conservation easements, any of the other conservancies, they will monitor these programs in perpetuity and they monitor them once a year. And monies are set aside to allow this monitoring to continue. So <clears throat> it's important to realize that these are quite well protected, these lands. Now there is the possibility that a land that's in this program or in one of the other programs that is covered by a cons conservation easement, there is the possibility that in the future, the public might need that land for some important public purpose. And so there is at least one way in which a conservation easement may be broken. And it may be broken, but it's a rigorous and in relatively stringent process to break it. It's very, it's very unlike zoning. Zoning is relatively easy to change, I say relatively. This process, which is called uh, eminent domain, um, involves typically a judge and uh, a court of law and all parties are able to go to this process and express themselves. And it's examined very closely, this desire, this request to break a conservation easement. And then the judge would make a final ruling. So it's not that these lands are totally locked up forever. They can be used if an important public purpose comes to light and it goes through the eminent domain process. Well, I want to first thank you for joining us today and giving us that information. I'm Chelsea Henry inviting you to watch live Ballot Meridian 2018 general election night coverage on Tuesday, November 6th, right here on Home TV. Thank you.